Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Togan's Fly Shop, Maui Jim Sunglasses, and Hardy Rods and Reels. Well, hello everyone. My name is Rick Pasek, the Fly Fish Fanatic, and welcome to another episode of On the Bench with Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today, we're going to tie a little uh, caddis pattern, a little caddis dry. Actually, it's not so little, it's a fairly large pattern. Uh, it works great in uh, in rivers and lakes. Um, probably you have done a little bit better in uh, in the rivers with this one, but uh, um, it's a really really good pattern. Um, it's kind of stimulator style, but not kind of stimulator style. You'll see. It's a it's a really effective pattern. Fairly simple to tie. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get her going. So in the vise today we have a Hens BL seven twenty four in a size ten. <clears throat> Whatever brand of hook you like, uh, just uh, just a nice uh, like a leech streamers type hook, type hook, in eight or a ten. Um, I don't go any smaller than a ten on this one. Uh, I'm gonna use some um, Semperfly Nano Silk in olive for the thread. I'm gonna use some Semperfly Dirty Bug Yarn with the high contrast olive. It's kind of almost like a Racophilia green, and the Dirty Bug Yarn for the body. For the uh, wing, I'm going to use some Semperfly Parley yarn in chartreuse. For the overwing, I'm going to use some deer hair. Um, this is uh, Pic Picric dyed uh, roe deer, this one. So it's got that, that green look to it. And then I'm going to use some of uh, one little bit of the, uh, oh, where are you? sorry, uh, there we go, uh, the uh, Whiting uh, Hackle uh, Coachman Brown. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's get her going. Like I said, it's a fairly simple fly, a um, couple of steps to it, and uh, you can actually, I tie this in two different ways with a body hackle and without a body hackle. This one won't have a body hackle, it's only going to have the front hackle. So I start about two to three hook eyes back with my thread. my thread on I want to come right to where the barb would be or, or the, just to before the bend of the hook just nip off my, my waist and take a piece of the uh, dirty bug yarn come back up and open turns right where I started roughly there I want to leave myself a good no amount of room at the front here for the wings come right back there we go. Uh, open turns back oh, forward. <clears throat> now I'm going to go in just touching wraps. I don't want to be over overlapping. Uh, I'm going to come all the way forward to where I want to be and then all the way back again. Leaving just a little bit of don't go all the way back. You see how it's thinner then? And then I want to come back forward again. One more time. Out there just want a bit of a bulbous body on this tie that off cut off your waist make sure you get those little ends tied in now if you want to here you can uh, take your velcro and just give it a, just a little bit of a, a rough up I don't give it too much but just a little bit just to make it look a little bit buggier okay and then I'm going to take some of that uh, poly yarn, Semperfly poly yarn. Really like this color for this uh, for this pattern. Now I want this to be just past the body, like just past. So about like that, the wing. Catch that in. Five turns in front. A couple of turns. With Right there, off she comes. Okay, <clears throat> again, just tie a few more times just to make sure you got that tied in nicely. Then what I like doing is taking my dubbing brush, this part of it, the toothbrush part, and just breaking up those fibers. I want them, I don't, I want the wing, but I want it spread out a bit, right? So I want it, I don't want the fibers to be touching each other. 
<clears throat> and clumped like it does when it like that's that's how they it comes on the on the card right so I want it spread a bit so now I'm gonna get my hair stacker I'm gonna get a little pinch of the deer hair not a huge pinch I'll show you once I got it stacked it's not a ton of deer hair um, this this will help it float but uh, it, it's also uh, um, I want the profile right? and you'll see what I mean by the profile I want this one to actually flare a little bit right <clears throat> so now if you really want this thing to float float really high instead of using the uh, the dirty bug yarn um, use the cap off dubbing from Semperfly that stuff lets it float forever so I'm just uh, picking out any of the uh, the short pieces out of the, I'm pinching the front of the uh, of the deer hair pack and then I'm just anything that's loose getting it out of there anything that's too short under fur this doesn't have any under fur thank thankfully but uh, so now I, I'm gonna stack this I want this to be the length of that uh, that wing so about there is where I'm gonna stack it up right about there switch hands with it stack it right on top get a couple of loose wraps with it and pull it down a bit pull it down a bit a bit now I'm tightening it up a bit now you'll see when I let go of my left hand here it's gonna the the the, the wing is actually gonna flare a bit and that's what I want I want that flare for this pattern I want the flare some patterns you don't this one I do so now I'm just gonna Clean up this deer hair, this head end here. Just cleaning up all the butts. Just want all the butts out of there. And if there's a butt or two left, it's, it really doesn't matter. Fish can't really tell. It's more for the fishermen than the fish. So, but. Uh, You can use a razor here too if you wanted. I don't get overly concerned. It's going to get covered here in a minute anyway. So. I can always come back and clean up those butts. So now I'm going to just give my thread a counterclockwise spin to flatten it. I'm going to go right through that up to the front and back through it again. Okay, one last little trim. There's a couple of little butts here. Sometimes you can just grab them and pull them out. That's what I just did. So, okay, again, like I said, I don't really, I'm not worried about uh, any of these little things, but, so now I'm going to take the, of course I got so much garbage on my bench here that my feather's full of stuff that's not supposed to be on it. <laughs> I'm going to take that Coachman, uh, Coachman uh, uh, hackle feather here, dyed Coachman brown here, or actually, sorry, it's a natural and I'm gonna tie this in on my side and I want the uh, the shiny side or the outside of the feather facing me okay let's put that out of the way then I'm gonna get a little bit more of that uh, dirty bug yarn like I said it's kind of tied in the in that stimulator style but it's not because the stimulator would have a body hackle and a few other things right so but uh, it's very similar, but it's not. So. Come back to my eye, and I'm just going to give it a couple of wraps here. I just want to just have a little bit of a, that's about it right there. Just want that continuation, if you want to call it that, of the body. But you can actually, I've done really well with this one instead of putting the green on, I'm putting a uh, brown dirty bug yarn on instead. 
think they call it mud brown or dirty brown or something. I can't remember what the, what the actual actual name of it is from Zemperfly. But so now I just take my hackle. I'm gonna go once right there, and then just really tight. I want to come as tight as I can and have at least three to four turns here. And you can even go back into it if you want to get a little bit tighter. And then forward again. Over top, over top, over top. Sweep everything back. Everything back. Build up a bit of a head. Worry about those few little fibers that are sticking out the front. I'll deal with those in a minute. So now I'm just going to whip finish. Nice and tight. Cut off my thread. Break off my hackle. If it doesn't want to break, you might have to cut it. But yeah, I'll cut this one. I don't want to pull it out. And then what I do is I stroke all my material back everything back try to keep it all the way out of that eye and then I'll just take a lighter and just just give it a quick melt just get rid of those little hairs that are maybe in the uh, inner or close to the eye and if there's any really stray hairs here deer hairs just pop them off those couple of them were really ooh, too flared get my scissor and get in there and do it Where are you, you little bugger? There you are. And that one there. So yeah, if they're too a little too flared, then you do want a flare to this, but not a huge. So there, that's my finished little fly. It's uh, it, it it's not definitely not the prettiest one out there, but this thing absolutely nails them. So uh, it's uh, uh, like I said, if you if you really want this thing to float high, instead of using the uh, the dirty bug yarn, use a kapok dubbing in, for the body, and that'll really help it float. But um, putting a little bit of a uh, little bit of, uh, of gink on this uh, floatant on this will make it float for quite a while. This uh, this this hackle in the front will help it float. Um, so it's uh, it'll just sit right in that surface slime, and that's what I want. I don't want this fully put on the top. I want this just. I want about half the body. Put half the body underwater, right? Well, like there, under the water. So, alrighty. Just let this thing swing. Give it if you're if you're uh, if you're do, using it on lakes, let it sit and pop, pop it, pop, pop it, pop, pop it, like almost like a like a gurgler, like a popper, and then let it stop and let it sit. Let the fish find it. Um, let them use their uh, their lateral line to to locate it. So, alrighty. Hope you guys enjoyed that one and thanks for uh, watching another episode of On the Bench with Sport Fishing on the Fly.